Hello friends and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to do a tutorial on how to paint juicy lips. For the purposes of this exercise, you can add the reference into your document or use an external reference program such as PureRef. This can be downloaded for free from their website and works really well. I have put a link down below in the description. PureRef can be set to flow over the top of your drawing software. I've created a video tutorial of how to use PureRef if you'd like a quick demo before proceeding with this tutorial. Just click on the card above. You can use any lips reference or just follow along with me. If you want to use the same reference, you can just send me a message through my Facebook page, Mindy Zielfelder Art, and I'll send it to you. Open up your software. I use Sketchbook Pro for Windows 10. Go into the image menu, click on image size, uncheck keep proportions and change your document size to seven inches by seven inches at 300 pixels per inch. Next, click on the paintbrush tool. Adjust the advanced settings using the brush property sliders. Go all the way down to edge and soften all the way to the left. Then close the properties. Make sure your color and brush pucks are activated. If they aren't, go to Window, check off Color Puck and Brush Puck. If you click inside the color puck, you will see a little palette menu where you can put your palette colors for the project you're working on. Refer to your reference in the PureRef app or whatever app you are using to choose a base skin color a line art color, warm and relatively dark but not black, a base lip tone, a light lip tone, a shadow lip tone, a base teeth color, a shadow teeth color, and a shadow skin color. Now choose the base skin color from your palette and using the paintbrush, set at the maximum size and opacity using the brush puck to adjust as needed. Lay in your base skin color. Next, create a new layer for the sketch by clicking the plus button in the layer editor. Select the pencil tool, adjust to maximum size, and then lower the opacity slightly. Select your sketch color, which should be a warm tone at a dark value, but preferably not black. It's not that important for this project since the layer will go away anyway, but it's a good habit to stay away from black for sketching. When sketching, first note the angle of the lips and the mouth. It's not completely straight up and down. It isn't quite as angled as I'm doing it, but I wanted a little more drama. Also, since the face is turned slightly away from the viewer, one side recedes in space. So to show this, that side will be slightly smaller and the angle is more compressed. Lips are made of a few of these soft pillow shapes called tubercles. There are two of these oval shapes on the bottom that touch each other and three on the top, two wide and oval, one small and round also referred to as the Proca line, in the center that dips down just under the cupid's bow. The top lip overall is generally narrower than the bottom lip, but for these juicy lips they are about equal. Draw in your oval shapes and the round Proca line and following the angles of the form. Once you've done the rough shapes, it's time to refine and make an edge, defining the overall lips and teeth. Since it's easy to get a jagged line, the way to help with that are the two tools, Steady Stroke and Predictive Stroke. I use Predictive Stroke whenever I can. This will smooth out any lines, except it sometimes doesn't work well for the smaller lines, so I use a Steady Stroke for those. 
Click on Steady Stroke, make sure it is set to about 29 to 30, and outline the dip at the top, and then later the Cupid's bow. After this, click on the Predictive Stroke tool set to 5 and continue outlining the shapes and refining your sketch. Erase the messy lines just to clean it up and make it easier to work with. It doesn't have to be perfect since the line drawing isn't in the final render. Resize your drawing using the Quick Transform tool the cross arrows. Resize using the center button. Click until you see the crossing arrows and drag till you get a good large size. It's easiest to work big whenever you can. Now draw in the teeth. Just follow the shapes in the reference noting the angles. Once you are satisfied with the line drawing you can move on to the base color of the lips. Add a new layer between the existing layers by clicking on the plus button in the layer editor. This layer should be under the line drawing, but over the skin layer. Pick a middle value lip color from your palette or the color puck, select your paintbrush, and lay in your base color. Try to stay within the sketch outline, filling it and making sure the edges are clean. Then duplicate the layer by clicking and dragging on the radial dial in the center of the layer on the layer editor, towards the upper left. Select Duplicate Layer. Then click the little lock to the right of the layer. This will lock the color you already painted so that you can only paint on that color, and it will prevent you from accidentally painting anywhere outside of it. Once locked, click on the airbrush tool and set the opacity all the way down to 1 using the brush puck. Stroke downward on the puck. Also using the puck, stroke right or left to adjust the size to about 90. We'll add some lighter tones first. Using the color puck, select the lighter lip tone from your palette or adjust the color wheel to a color that is slightly lighter and warmer than your current lip base color. Then start painting the lighter edges where the lips protrude forward a bit, anywhere that the light might catch. Note that the light is coming from the left side of the screen. Then duplicate the layer. Duplicating the layers isn't mandatory, but it helps in case you make a mistake and don't want to start over from scratch. This layer will automatically be locked since you duplicated a locked layer. You can lower the opacity of your line drawing at this point. Just click on the layer of your line drawing and adjust the blue slider for opacity down to where it's still visible, but lighter. Now we'll lay in the shadow areas. Select the lip shadow color from your palette, or choose a color on your color puck's color wheel that is slightly darker and cooler than your base lip color. Go ahead and paint in the shadow areas using the airbrush. Keep adding shaded tones, adjusting the value and color temperature as you need to, with cooler, slightly bluer red, shades in the darkest and deepest areas. Be careful not to lose saturation. When you lower the value in the color wheel straight down, it tends to desaturate, so you have to compensate by moving the saturation to the right slightly as you move down. These lips are very red and pink, making it a fairly saturated painting. There aren't any grays. At this point, move the current layer above the sketch layer by clicking on the up arrow on the right hand side of that layer in the layer editor. Drag the layer up above the sketch layer and into place. Keep working the shadows and adjusting lights if you need to. Next, go to your skin layer and lock it. Choose a color that is slightly darker and cooler than your base skin color and start adding shadows below the lips. I'm taking liberties here since I don't necessarily need or want the painting to be an exact copy of my reference and I'm using what knowledge I have of the lip anatomy, so don't worry if you're wondering why this part doesn't look like the reference. Often very large lips will act as kind of a shelf, creating a shadow over the skin underneath. This will heighten the drama. The shadow can get pretty dark at the center. Before moving on, you'll want to smooth out the lip edge. You'll have to unlock all the lip layers you've created so far. Using the smudge round brush found in your brush library under the colorless blender section, 
adjust the opacity to about three to seven. Very low, but not the lowest setting. And smooth out the edge so it looks better blended with the skin. Make sure to smooth all, all the visible layers. You can also make the bottom lip layers not be visible and just smooth out the top lip layer. After the edge is smooth, return to the skin shadow. There's a slight hint of shadow that extends under the closest side with base skin color between the lip and the shadow. Now add a layer to the top of the layers and using the lip shadow color, start adding some line shapes to denote the shadows of the stratified lip skin. Also, try to define where the lips meet as well as the inside edge of the top and bottom lips. I took additional liberties to further define the oral commissures on the right and left sides. This is the deepest spot where the lips meet. Each stratified shadow is also generally complemented by a lighter edge, so add some lighter line shapes. Since this is a juicy lip tutorial, those lines won't be very pronounced. I blended mine out with the colorless blender so that they are just hinted at. Then you can turn off your sketch layer for now by clicking the eye inside the sketch layer on the layer editor. Click on the advanced tab and scroll down to size with light pressure and adjust the slider so that it is much smaller than the size with the heavy pressure. Scroll down and do the same with the opacity with light pressure. Close the brush properties. Make sure the brush is fairly small in size. Choose white or nearly white from the color puck. Carefully paint in the shapes of the highlights, applying pressure in areas you want a thicker and brighter highlight, and reducing pressure in areas with thinner and less bright highlights. Try to make sure the edges are smooth, not too jagged. You can use a soft eraser set to low opacity to erase out some areas for a more natural look, being careful not to erase too much. The shine should still be highly contrasted to the lip flesh. That's what makes the lips so glossy. Time for the teeth. Turn the sketch layer back on. Click on the eye in the layer editor. Add a new layer between the skin and the base lip layer. Click on the plus button in your layer editor. Reset your paintbrush setting back to the default setting. Go to Brush Properties, Advanced Tab, click on Reset at the bottom. Pick the base teeth color from your color palette or choose a light shade that is very slightly darker than white and warm, almost a very pale grayish tan color. Teeth primarily are not white. Paint in all of the teeth, then lock the layer. Now using the airbrush at a low opacity, anywhere from one to 10, and a size of about 25, paint the shadows using the teeth shadow color in your color palette, or pick a color from the color wheel in the color puck that is darker and more tan than the teeth base color. Start defining the teeth. There is a slight shadow on the teeth underneath the lips and a very slight shadow in between the teeth. Teeth can be very tricky. While you define the edges, be careful not to go too dark and contrast too much as it can make them look toothy and sort of checkered looking. Turn off the sketch layer and keep defining shadows. Darkening and lightening is needed to avoid that strange truth toothy look. Note that there's a darker shadow under the top teeth where the teeth meet. The lower teeth will also be slightly dark darker than the top teeth. Since the mouth is rounded and moves away from the viewer in space, the right and left sides will also be in the shadow, with the areas behind the lips on the right and left being the darkest. Adjust the value and color temperature as needed. You want strong definition between the lips and teeth for maximum depth. Now 
Once the shadows are rendered in, you can start working the lights. Choose a color that is lighter and slightly warmer than the base tooth color. Adding a lighter bottom edge to the teeth, the top teeth, will help to define them against the darker bottom teeth. Creating linear shapes helps the teeth to look more real. And then finally, add the highlights using the whitest white. You may want to blend out the highlights somewhat. And we are nearly done, just a few more tweaks to go. I continued working, adjusting the cupid's bow when I realized it was too wide, and then I added in more darks to the interior of the lips to define them better. I also adjusted the angle of the front tooth a bit, and then shaded the skin around the oral commissures using the airbrush Then I added some soft light to the upper edge and the fill trim ridges along with a soft shadow. Now you can add a new layer and we'll start working on the skin textures. Find the camo brush in your brush library. I think it's under the texture section, not the texture essentials section, the texture section. Adjust the opacity down and select a color that is slightly darker than the skin. Paint in some of the texture. Change to a color that is slightly lighter than the base skin and continue. Try to model the lights and darks to match the forms of the face with the darker air areas receding away. You can finish by adding some highlights using the speckled brush found in the brush library under Texture Essentials. Change the color to white or nearly white, adjust the brush size and opacity, and paint in the highlights above the left lip, which is the lightest and closest part of the face. Refine the lip edge known as the lower vermilion border by adding a layer and using warmer skin tone to paint over that lip edge. That edge of the lips usually blends into the skin and is not very defined. Then you can add some more highlights back over the top. I continue to refine the shading of the skin around the oral commissures and then add a small amount of soft highlight to the bottom of each until I am happy with the final result. This concludes the Juicy Lips tutorial. I really hope you learned something new today. And if you have a question, leave me a comment down below. Please feel free to share this video and subscribe to my channel. Have a great day.